welcome to Dano on fire. And until I said that, I was literally on fire. They're cooking right behind me. So today on the show, I have someone who is extremely fashionable. He has a pug as his child, and he has made the word Ceylon into something so sexy. <laughs> So this show is all about eating Sri Lankan food and it also happens to be your favourite. Absolutely. Love Sri Lankan food. I, I love food in general but Sri Lankan food is my absolute favourite. So is that what sort of made you become a part of Kamasutra as well? Not exactly but it certainly helped. Um, no. Kamasutra was a great idea by Darshan. Um, believed in the idea and believed in the concept and it was a real bonus that it was Sri Lankan food because that's what I love to eat. Mm. Um, so this place had a controversial name when it came out, it was interesting, people thought, spoke about it and sort of eventually we're here. Because uh, Shalin likes to enjoy his cooking time in a more intimate way. Because I do see a lot of pictures on Instagram which pops up on a Sunday <laughs> uh, saying that you have done some Italians. So what is your passion for cooking? Has it always been with you? Or? I think I've been cooking for quite a while. Um, I properly started cooking. I think when I was in university and I had to survive by yourself. Uh, survive and make rice because I loved rice. Um, so it was rice dishes first and then slowly I got into cooking and the more I traveled and ate different food, kept getting into cooking even more. Mm -hmm. And uh, cooking is something that's always relaxing, um, then experimenting and it's, it's one of those things that let you create. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I love those little, anything that allows creation or anything that allows me to build something that's there's a lot of satisfaction in that so I think cooking is one of those things mm. so I really enjoy cooking and what's more fun than eating that's true but are you the type who does the whole pre-planning for the cooking and also washing up afterwards not a fan of washing up <laughs> not a fan of washing up thankfully we've got help to Do you like wash when up. people interfere while you're cooking I hate that <laughs> I hate people tasting in between the cooking Already. I hate people standing around during the cooking so I, I like to get the job done and uh, afterwards, I'll plate it and they can eat it. Okay. So I, I, absolutely. I love sharing food. I mean, if, there's no point cooking if, you don't, if you're not going to yeah. share your food. Love sharing food, love cooking for people. But when I'm in the kitchen, I'd prefer to be alone. Okay. I will speak about your style in a bit, but let's order something. Yep. Yeah. So, so if, if, right. you, if you do come here yeah. or when, whenever I do dine here, we'll, we'll be, I generally start with um, what's called a manioca floss. Okay. And um, a spicy chicken wing. Uh, the spicy chicken wing is an adaptation of the western style chicken wings but made with spices and vinegar and, and Sri Lankan spices so, and it's served with curd. So it's pretty yum, you can have a conversation and eat it. Um, so let's get some and have right. a go. So we are going to be picking dishes that represent garlic. Our food's here, so uh, I have to serve with my hand. No? Go for it. This, we encourage people to get very hands-on with the food. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is manioka. It's fried. It's fried, but the consistency is very different to how you'd usually see it. Oh. So it's grated in a way that's so thin, and oh. it tastes well. Oh. Huh? So it's yeah. crispy, crunchy, light, and it's manioka. And it's manioka. Um, about your talking about your sense of fashion, you know, in the recent past, is when sort of Colombo and Sri Lanka started, you know, felicitating people who are well dressed, and also people started making that a part of their identity to look good. Back in the days, it was just very. There wasn't a. What can I say? There, were, just because you dress well, you were not felicitated. Mm. Absolutely. But now it's a huge thing that's appreciated. How do you think this transition did happen from your parents' time to today? See, I think there was a few people who were recognized for dressing well, but they were always older people. Mm. Uh, like people like my mom, and then there was Uncle Keithy's article mm. that talked about, you know, what saris there were and stuff like that, and that's all that there was. But I think what's happened now is the social media culture has come in. 
and everyone is taking pictures of themselves, you go out, people are taking pictures of you, there's far more media out there. You don't have to wait for the newspaper, you don't have to even wait for a magazine, um, it's online, mm. um, even, even in terms of magazines, there's so much more of it, yeah. then there's Facebook, so there's a lot of media we're exposed to, there's a lot of images we're exposed to. And even, even a profile picture means a lot to people. Absolutely, yeah. so because you, all of a sudden you've got people commenting on pictures, mm. on on fashion and all that is happening in a, in a very short span. Mm. Um, I was having this conversation with someone in fashion and how fashion has evolved because of this as well. Yeah. Because back in the day when fashion was released in Europe, mm. by the time it got to Australia, to the other end of the world pretty much, it took over a year. Now, it's released in Europe today at Fashion Week or whatever, it's out there now and everyone's seeing it. So, yeah. The life, the life cycle of fashion has got much shorter so as well. That's more frequent changes. Absolutely. That's why past fashion trains like Zara and people like that who change the the stock the collection so fast, so fast mm -hmm. are working so well. Mm -hmm. From there, I wanted to speak about your life at home. Okay. I know one side to you, the pug side. Mm -hmm. You all have always had pets, right? We always had, I, not always, but we had dogs in the house. Um, None of them were really my dogs. I never had a pet of my own. But the family had pets and my brother had dogs and so on. Yeah. So, Pugsley uh, is the first real pet I'm like super connected to. Mm. So much so that he's very much part of the family and uh, imagining life after Pugsley is going to be tough. Is it your dog per se or is it you and your wife sort of share? So my wife Susie wanted, wanted okay. a pug. Um, when we got it, so when we got it, I said, okay, we can have the pug, but he can be outside. Um, we've got a little uh, balcony like thing, he can be outside. Can't do that to a pug. Yeah. No, no, but this is a covered area, not like yeah, a, like yeah that he has a big area. Pug's for eyes are too, too, it hurts your heart. Exactly. So that lasted about a day. <laughs> then I said, okay, let him be in the house, we'll hang out in the house, all that, but don't let him come in the room, let's keep the room a mm. dog free zone. And now he sleeps on the bed. <laughs> but he also has birthday parties and the works. So, well, he's treated like a kid in the house. He's, he's, the, he's the child we haven't had yet. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's How it. How old he's, is he now? Pugsley is four. Okay. And uh, very, very much a part of the family. Everyone, even when the guests come in, uh, he's acknowledged. Yeah. <laughs> um, even when we are, me and Susie are traveling, people will come and just visit him because he's alone. So, right. he's got a big following Community amongst of our his own. friends and family. I think he well. should start his own Instagram page. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I think he has a person. I have five of them. None of them have such significant characteristics about them. But uh, because my ones are not pugs exactly. They're just pugs. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, but pugs have such personality, personality and True. just looking at them, those facial yeah. uh, uh, characters, everything put together and the little head tilts. Yeah. <laughs> There's Amazing. so much to it. Um, about what we're eating, I just need to give you a recap. This food is amazing because, um, okay, I've gone through my second chicken, third chicken, this is my fourth. Um, it's a real good combo. When you were making the menu here, did you all have a say in it? Yeah, so what we would do is, it's all Darshan's genius. Mm. So what we would do is he'd put things together, we'd, we'd sit down at his house, do the tastings, give our input and so on. He'll tweak things where necessary. How mm. often do you all change it? The menu here? Mm. No, the core items not so much, but again, we look at things that are not moving that much and change things up. Then Darshan comes up with a great idea and adds it on. Um, but when it comes to the food, it's all Darshan. Yeah. Um, what we what we will do is just one of the critics who get to enjoy the food. Yes. <laughs> so that's one of the perks that we get to taste it before anyone else. Um, but uh, I mean, he's a guy who's got so much detail into what he does, and. Um, I mean, he does a great job and we are, we are very lucky to be a part of it. Welcome back to the show. This is Dan on Fire and we are at Khan... <laughs> Welcome back to the show. It's Dan on Fire and we are at Kama Sutra. I just needed to say it right, you know. One mistake and it can go the other way. <laughs> All right, so we are talking to Charlene, and here there's another location at this restaurant. I'm sure if you've been here, you'll know. 
uh, but there is going to be something more special that's going to come here. And you have chosen a fish dish. Yes. So we're, we're going to eat two fish dishes. This is the first of two. Um, the first one is a barramandi. Mm. Um, one of my favorite dishes here is very light. Um, even if you're on like a no carb diet, it's oh. perfect. I'm always on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's cooked on a banana leaf on, a, on, on the grill. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll get it down. So again, a lot of Sri Lankan spices, onion, um, and it's cooked. If you, once you dig into it, you'll okay. see it's like cooked to perfection. So it's just flakes. Superb. So I'm just going to serve that up while I speak mm. to you. Tell me about, you know, when you got into the brand Sparsilon came about, and also marketing Sparsilon needed a lot of people to come together. That's like, I remember the first time when you all opened the spa, a lot of people came to try out this new culture because, you know, spas in our country was always seen like, mm, spa <laughs> Yeah, and to break that stigma and to make it a place where people can be free and enjoy must have taken a lot of work. Yeah, so there were two stigmas we needed to break. One was, Ah, spa agriyane, the culture, <laughs> yeah. and that ah, the wink you and yeah. the spa. So we had to make spa an acceptable thing yeah. to do. Number two, the Ayurveda had a bit of a bad mm. a perception for being stinky and mm. smelly, and oh, if I come, will I smell for a week and all yeah. that? So we had to make Ayurveda fashionable, sexy again, sexy again, and or sexy for the first time probably. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had to take make spa a lifestyle rather than this little thing you did when when no one was watching. Yeah. So. The whole idea behind it was that we tied up with a lot of lifestyle events. Mm -hmm. um, we we made made it so that people were happy to come and even post it on on, on their uh, social media, saying, "Hey, I'm at Spa." It's a Salon. statement. It became a statement. Absolutely. Yeah. So, it, we made it part of people's lifestyle, mm -hmm. and we consider ourselves not to be a spa brand or a cosmetic brand, yeah. but a lifestyle brand. I used to be a Velavatta boy, and their house is in Velavatta, so I visited their house very frequently during that time, of course, when I had more time in my hand. <laughs> but your mum has been a huge influence of what you all are today. I think uh, she planted that single root or that seed that literally grew up to what it is today. And, and you all didn't let her down in the sense you took her dream and took it to another level. And I think she'll be so proud of you all every minute of your, her time. Tell me about her and her influence on you. My mom was was a very, very strong, very focused, very driven woman. Um, she was... And the epitome of fashion. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And she was very, um, I mean, very detail-oriented when it came to the way she presented herself, the way she dressed and everything she did. Um, and she sustained that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it would bother her if she didn't look right. So mm. she, going out, she made sure she looked perfect yeah. when she went out. Everything was matched perfectly. Um, she was a person that kept always insisted that we needed to keep learning mm -hmm. because she'd keep learning. And then two days before she passed, I, I was sitting with her and when I walked in and she was still reading, um, reading a book about uh, plants and herbs mm -hmm. and things like that. So there was a co constant yearning to learn more. Um, she was very spiritual, which, mm -hmm. which um, she guided us on as well. Um, she was an amazing person, huge heart, very generous, and we are so lucky that yes, we followed um, in her footsteps in a way in in her yeah. industry, but we were never pressured to do so. Mm. We were all encouraged to go out, do our own studies, do whatever you want, and it just so happens that we all study different things, but came together in this one business, mm. uh, uncoerced by her. Although I'm sure she loved it, and yeah. maybe it was a secret plan yeah. anyway. <laughs> But, um, it, it, I mean, it all worked out beautifully and I, I'm, I'm, ho I'm pretty sure she's smiling down now. When you all launched the brand Spa Salon, what was her feedback when she tried it? She loved it. She yeah. loved it. And, and even during the time we were launching, we'd, we'd, we'd get feedback from her, we'd tell her ideas. She loved it that, the, that the, the, her boys were doing something and going in her, in her footsteps. She was a sensation to see on TV because she created something very unique to our country. So, and also that she had a signature look about her, like an Asha Bosley of Sri Lanka. Like, Absolutely, I mean, she was the first uh, person to start the beauty programs on TV. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember back in the day, um, before email and all that, there used to be big gunny bags that the mm -hmm. postman used to bring, which were letters ask, uh, asking her for advice and all that. And she'd, she'd sit and go through all that. She'd mm -hmm. had a, she had a couple of assistants and they'd go through all that. And she had this huge following. Uh, 
even about her age she loved to tell people how old she was because that proves exactly yeah so she was never someone who said no oh, don't ask me how old she loved to tell people her age but she looked after herself so well yeah. that she looked beautiful as well yeah i'm going to continue eating this until we move to another place to try something else i think we are waiting for something no we'll wait here and they're going to come cook at the table next okay okay yeah? If you're curious and you want to know how things are done here, this is one of those. I don't want to put my hand in here; it's hot. Um, this amble tiel, is it? It's amble tiel, and I think lots of people are used to cooking amble tiel for, for like hours, hours like and ages, hours and then keeping it and all that. So this is something that Darshan's uh, conceived, um, and, and it's done in front of you. It's done at your table. Your amble tiel is cooked for you in 10 minutes, and we use sashimi grade fish. So oh. that means it's. Sashimi quality. It's been preserved in in that way. It's been cut, cut and cleaned in, way, in yeah. that way, so it's good enough to eat raw. And it's now being cooked in spices. And in about three minutes, they will come and pour pour in the the spice mix for it. And uh, it it's cooked for you right in front of you. In terms of just a few questions that can just put you in the spot um do you think there are more stylish men or more stylish women in colombo colombo more stylish women for sure but i think in the last men 5 have, years men 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 are starting to take more care of themselves and paying attention to how they look and so on but you know very rarely i come across this term which i don't like metrosexual no who like to be fashionable Which is always looked around as, I think he's gay. Mm. You know, it's like a very common word here. What is your thought on that? I think metrosexual was a term that came came out some time ago when men didn't take care of themselves that mm. much, and men didn't. Men's fashion was not it was not a thing that was so accessible, and people were not participating as much and in general. About, yeah. So, but the word metrosexual now has, I think, faded, and uh, men are. Taking grooming seriously now, even as, uh, as a person in the industry of personal care, mm. uh, men's grooming products are the fastest growing thing in our segment. Oh wow! So uh, that shows that men are taking notice of it. Men are paying attention to how they dress, how they look, and so on, which is great. On the side of politics, are you someone who is involved? Do you, do you like you know all boys here? You know when they meet up. Oh, Machong, I know, I know what happened <laughs> today. I was actually. At work, and the biggest discussion happened, as if they have sat right there in the parliament. The drivers had this deep conversation, and I enjoyed my cup of tea while I listened to the versions of all the stories. Are you the type who? I'm. I'm not into huge political discussions. I'm not a huge supporter of any political party or anything like that. Um, politics, when it comes to affecting our lives and and our businesses, yes, um, we'll we'll assess what's going mm. on there. Um, but there are things that you don't have much control over these yeah. days that the politicians are up to, and sometimes it's just it's just funny. Yeah, true. And it's just entertaining to just watch it. But I don't spend too much time sitting discussing it. I just know because after the war was over, people were like, not much news, no. <laughs> A lot of entertainment you know, now. <laughs> yeah, there's way too much to deal with. You know that although I've known him for a long time, I don't talk. I started talking to you more. Hmm? Later on, no. Yeah, because finding you, you you see you at an event for like a minute, and then you're somewhere else, and you're somewhere else, and you're somewhere else. I'm a and shy it, boy, man. Oh uh, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I also, telling you the honest truth, you see the same faces. There's not much you can talk. Mm -hmm. So you do the. I've mastered it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has been an honor knowing you. It's great working with you. The fun, and you. You have carried yourself really well, and it's amazing. And the best part is, I think, you have become so successful. But the fact that you are so grounded is something that is, that is, you all have been brought up on those lines, and I think that's very important. Thank you, thank you, and lovely doing this program with you and others as well. It's always um, been fun. Yeah, I got to know his brother first, Shivi, and uh, um, and I think the the roots that they have, you know, respecting your mom and all of those. I think those are reasons why we all connected so well. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. But I do not go up the Vanavana. I need to have uh, the very famous Appa here. 
The Ape is of the, course. The what the hopper, the dessert hopper, you need to have that. It's called the what the hopper. It's called what the hopper, yes. Michael, it is a bit of a what the moment for me right now. <laughs> uh, thank you so very much. Amazing having you on the show. It's a wrap uh, for Dano on Fire. We will see you soon. <laughs>